Today's guest is a self-love and transparency coach. She helps women and teen girls learn to love themselves after trauma and heartbreak and live intentionally. She's also the founder and designer of Shy Intimacy Apparel, which I would like for her to talk about later on. And she's a blogger and a YouTuber of just living this shit. <laughs> Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Tarita Spicer. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, it's been a busy but productive week, but I will not yeah. complain. That's good. That's good. Same for me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm first of all, I'm excited about this show because I love the blog. I watched your interviews. We follow each other on Twitter. <laughs> so uh, I've been enjoying the content. I want to jump into uh, about the divorce because you've recently gone through a divorce and I want to know what have you learned from it and what is one piece of advice you would give to those who desire to marry? Hmm. I hate the word advice. Um, yeah, my divorce just got finalized just a few months ago and something that I learned through the process of everything has been taking more time for yourself like before you get into relationships and before you get married I feel like I can only speak for myself of course but I know I wasn't like I wasn't really good with feeling good about myself and being very confident in myself I feel like when I was younger I had a lot of confidence and then I went through a lot of things in college and that kind of like trans kind of changed who I was. And so I don't feel like I was a confident person. So I honestly feel like I just kind of, I don't want to say settled, but I feel like I just, I really wanted to be in a relationship with someone because I, I really wanted to feel safe and I wasn't necessarily getting to know myself and being safe within myself before I try to be in a relationship with someone because that makes it harder to be a good person for your kids, for your partner and just the many other responsibilities of just being an adult and going to work and just trying to live. So mm -hmm. I definitely would tell people like my best advice is to make sure that you're like really confident, like just really secure within yourself and that you're dealing with things. Like I wouldn't say you have to stop not being in a relationship until you just have yourself perfected because that's not going to ever happen. Right. But that you're like in a space where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm going into a relationship for the right reason and not because I'm looking for something from mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So were you younger when you got, how old were you when you first, when you married? Okay, so I had a son at, um, at 21 from my college boyfriend. And then a year and a half later, between that time that I, after I had him, we were kind of going back and forth. And so then I met my then husband a year later. So we started dating like when my son was just a year old. So I didn't give myself enough time in between that serious relationship and motherhood to kind of get myself together. And then um, we have an 11 year age difference. So he's 11 years older than me. He's never been married before, but it just, it didn't seem like a big deal at first, but I feel like as I was growing up and learning myself, I feel like the age gap just kind of just seemed more prominent as I got older. Mm -hmm. Interesting, because I'm 12 years older than my wife now. So what kind of what kind of advice would you give me with I'm, I'm 12 years older than her? So, yeah, I, you know, what, what kind of advice would you give me then? Um, I think my advice is still the same thing. Like when you're confident in yourself, I just feel like it doesn't, I don't think that's going to harm the relationship, but I feel like if you're not, it goes into one of those, if I'm older, like if the woman's older, it's more like a mother, father, or like you feel like somebody's bossing you around and you're trying to grow up and you're like, you're trying to tell me what to do or like, which I just feel like we were, we were on the same page sometimes, but a lot of times we weren't on the same page. And so, like I said, as I started learning myself and like growing up and becoming more mature and more confident in myself, I just feel like stuff that I was comfortable with when I was younger, I just kind of felt like this isn't for me anymore. So I don't feel like the age gap is 
necessarily like a bad situation for people. So I would never say that. I just feel like for me, because I was not in a good place, the age gap was just like, you're not my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't my daddy. Right. <laughs> No, I no, I totally understand. I do believe confidence is everything because I can say going from my first marriage to remarrying, uh, I'm a lot more confident. I was 40 at the time when, when I got remarried. Way more confident at 40 than I was at 24 when I first got married. So, um, yeah, I was 20. Yeah, I think I was 28 when I went. And we were together from me being 22 until we were separated for the last three years. So, I mean, that was my twenties and thirties was that relationship. So mm. the long, that's a long time. I feel you. So I'm, same here. We have in church because right. like my twenties, thirties, I went through a divorce. I'm like, I can't believe I'm out here at 40 starting Listen. all over. And it was new, you know, I mean, I was, when I first met, I mean, it was like Facebook was a new thing. Right. By the time right. I got divorced, you had Instagram, Snapchat, and right. TikTok, and all these other videos. I was like, oh my God, I don't know what in the world I've gotten myself into now. That's what I told my friends. I'm like, see, I didn't have all this stuff before. I'm like, and I just feel like it. it's good and bad because it's busy out here. <laughs> busy out here <laughs> mm, yeah I, you know what because now that we're here I want to ask you about that what do you do you date now or what would how do you see the dating scene by today's standards okay so I can't compare those standards back then to these mm. standards because I don't feel like I really dated when I was younger I feel like I just got into long relationships so I never took the time to kind of, you know, fill things out, check people out, check myself out, things like that. So now I'm like intentionally dating and I've dated, I've went on, shall I say, I've went on a few dates and I'm like, this is different. Um, I haven't had like totally bad experiences, but it's just being 43 and learning how to date and learning myself is different. So I don't know if I have, like right now, I'm always like, do I have enough patience for this? Because I also feel like, like you said, like social media, like we didn't have social media back then. So now it's just like you have this wide range of people that can contact you and contact whoever you may be interested in, you know, just vice versa. I just feel like it's it's just busy and it's a lot of attention and distractions and, and things. So for me, I'm a little nervous, so I have gone on some dates and I ha I've had some good experiences and I, I enjoy the fact that I'm trying new things and being more confident in myself, but yeah. Mm. It's That's good. I, I, I like to hear that because when you get to talking about dating, not you, but in particular, you yeah. talk to people about dating, they're like, oh, the dating scene is horrible and the people are, it's crazy out here. And, and I'm just like, Okay. I mean, that's almost everybody's, that's what everybody's talking about. And yeah. I'm like, everybody can't be that bad, you know? <laughs> really that bad? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I I got remarried, so I was just like, you know, I'm kind of a one woman type guy anyway, so. That's how I am. And that's why I was always in like long-term relationships because I'm like, I don't feel like doing all this dating. I'm almost like, can I just find somebody, meet them, and then just just go on this path and just try to figure out with this one person? I feel like it's, I don't know, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. So. Mm -hmm. No, I, I totally agree. I wanted to shift to some uh, a little more serious, well, not that divorce is <laughs> serious, but I wanted to talk about in, in your videos and also on your blog, talked about you losing your brother in 2014, and then six months later, uh, your dad that raised you passed away. What was your grieving process like? And I want to ask you this because I'm starting to hear this more in direct messages that I get from people that people say, my significant other just lost their dad. I don't know how to deal with that. Like I'm starting to hear a lot about loss. So what was your grieving process like in 
well, how would you help somebody who's dealing with that grieving? Um, I think, oh goodness, like that was like a really tough time for our family. Like they were both unexpected and for them to happen so close together, it was a lot. Um, and especially I couldn't imagine that for a lot of people now because of COVID, I feel like a lot of people have experienced a lot of death. I am thankful that um, even though we haven't been in a great place in our relationship for a long time, that my spouse at the time was very supportive because he had been in my family for so long. And so it's just really having a great support system, like your your partner or your family and friends. Just um, for me, um, I feel like losing both of them back to back because we, I mean, it was just kind of like the four of us. Um, I feel like that was really what shifted my mindset about life and being in my relationship and not necessarily being completely comfortable and happy in my place because I was just like, man, life is so short. Things just change so often. Like why stay in a place where you're not happy, where you're not comfortable? You're not happy, I'm not happy. And it's like, we keep trying to hold on to these little glimmers of being happy with each other, but we're not really happy. So I just feel like at that time, that's when I was really just like, I really got to start living. Um, and the, I mean, the grieving process just continues, just like trying to deal with that whole situation and then dealing with my kids, dealing with the situation. I mean, it's just, it, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Um, yeah. 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 I, I only can imagine, um, Cause I know for my ex-wife, she lost her mom when we were together and I never lost, I mean, I lost my dad, but we weren't as close. So it, it didn't sting as much, but seeing my ex-wife lose her mom, that kind of yeah. hit different. Cause I've never seen her cry. Like the way I've seen her cry when she lost her mom and I was kind of stuck. I just didn't know what to say or what to do. It's just like, I'm just here for you. That's, Mm, that's all like that's all I can do you know that's the thing that's the best thing I mean I feel like I was the same way because me and my brother were close mm. and although we had kind of he had a motorcycle accident like a few days after I had my son so that and that was in 2000 so we had him for 14 years he was basically confined to a wheelchair he was in a coma for nine months like so he was not the same person that we had, but we had him. So that was just like an awesome thing. It's like, okay, he's watching our milestones. He's, he was a part of my wedding. He watched me have kids and things like that. So for him to pass away the way he did so suddenly, it was almost kind of like, wow, like life just happens. But just having people there that support you and just, you don't have to say anything. It's just making sure you're just there. Your presence is enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah well thank you for sharing that um i, I know it, it has to be tough thanks for sharing that i just you just never know who you're able to help through your loss you know um let's talk about there was a tweet that you said because i'm, I'm always checking out your post <laughs> you said <laughs> i'm mad that i can ask you for anything except for what i really wanted i said i have to ask her about that Okay, so for me, I feel like, again, it came with confidence. I feel like when I've dated or when I've been in relationships, it's easy. it's been easier for me to just kind of ask for random things that don't mean a lot to me versus like really verbalizing that I need these things from you. And because I've always kind of felt like if I say what I really need, someone's going to see me as too needy. And... I think in a lot of instances, I probably was. I think I was probably like connecting in the wrong way and, and not in a healthy manner, but just, I don't know. I've been having a lot of realizations, this especially just this last year. And I'm just like, wow, like I've been in relationships where it was hard for me to just tell someone something simple as in, I just, I just kind of want you to be here. I want you to talk to me. I want you to understand what I've been through. It took me a long time for me to actually verbalized that I had been raped when I was in college. Um, I knew that it had happened, but I wasn't for sure. I kept in my mind, I kept trying to rationalize what had happened because it was someone I was friends with. And so I was just like, okay, maybe 
I did something, but I was never able to like talk about that. And I went to therapy before I got married. Like I, I've been through marriage counseling and everything. And I had never, I had never told anyone. My friends didn't know. And so like after going through a lot of things in my marriage, I finally started talking to people and telling them a lot of things that I had been through. And it was like a release and a relief. And it's just like not being able to tell people what you really need. That's hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, therapy, I mean, I I can't express how important therapy is, especially when you find the right one mm-hmm. that can really help you unlock some things, you know, because um, I had been through some sexual abuse when I was like seven mm-hmm. and I didn't know how to process that. Yep. And when I was in therapy around 41, yeah, around 41, my therapist, she was so dope. Like she helped me unlock that. Like she helped me to to, to deal with that self-condemnation and, and, you know, just trying to process it all. And I was like, it's such a blessing to be free from that. It's just like, wow. When you can really have a safe space and somebody that you can share that with. Um, so like, I don't mind sharing my story with that with people now because you just never know who's been who been through that too, who might need that help, and you might be that person who who can unlock that that door for them. Yep. So, um, and, and that's why I like about about your blog because you were very transparent about a lot of things, and I just felt like I knew you that much more just from the blog. So, thanks for sharing that. And then you talked about. Uh, you spent some years and I think you talked about this a little bit. You said you spent years giving yourself away emotionally, physically, and sexually, sometimes by choice, sometimes lack of knowledge and courage and a few unfortunate times against my will. And I was thinking when you said that, that there's a lot of black women who have gone through the same thing. And I know you're talking about confidence. What does, how 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 do you define confidence in your life like what what does that look like for you from a, a personal perspective for me it's more speaking up like mm. through the time i've been separated the last three years i started i kind of connected with my um beautician and she was like you know me and a couple other ladies are having this meditation in the park and she's like i want to invite you to go so i started going and I kept telling them, like, I have a hard time telling people how I feel. I said, I go from like zero to a thousand. I won't say anything. And then I get really angry because you're not reading my mind. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, now I'm yelling what I need. Like, you should have known whether it's a friend, whether it's in a relationship. And so I said, I really want to work on my communication and really like being able to have healthy conversations and not holding on to things and expecting people to know. Mm-hmm. So, um, for me, I feel like it's really like learning communication and like learning to speak up for myself, respectfully um, speak to other people and also just remembering people don't know everything that I've been through and I don't know everything that they've been through. So kind of carefully craft your words when you talk to people. Don't assume that you can talk to everybody the same way, Mm. you know? Um, But yeah, my confidence is in speaking like, doing interviews with people like that. When I was started doing my YouTube channel, I was like, who am I? And my friends kept saying, you said you were trying to work on your communication. Look at you. Now you're doing speaking engagements. Now you <laughs> YouTube interviews, you're doing your blog. And I'm like, wow, this is what I was praying for. Like to be able to speak more and to share my story and connect with people. So mm-hmm. watching it feels good. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you speak with confidence for sure. And you do paint pictures to let people feel your reality. Um, And that's expressed through the blog. And then I seen some of the, with the YouTube interviews as well. So, and and I, you know, I really didn't know that that was like really a big struggle as far as like that, that speaking up. Um, Because I'm like, you kind of seem like a natural to me, you know? No. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) No, no rehearsing. You don't do, you know, no looking in the mirror just turn the camera on and start talking. And then I watch back and I'm like, is that me? Like, is that? 
<laughs> no, that's that's awesome. You know that sometimes you know the very thing that holds you back sometimes is the thing that can be the the thing that opened the door up for you. You know, so that's awesome though that you're able to speak out like that and to get it's because i think a lot of times with reading minds and stuff like that that's a big issue in relationships like you're just supposed to know yeah why do you not know that this is what i want or what i need like you can't feel that i'm trying to say this to you <laughs> yeah it's like the whole you know Jedi mind tricks and stuff. You're just like, so how was I supposed to know that? You know, and, and I've been guilty of that sometimes too. And I realized too in therapy that you have to say what's on your mind because right. I struggle in that area as well. Uh, because sometimes you wondering, are they gonna be offended? And then is it just gonna mess up your whole day? You might be going on a date, you know, yeah. you might be hanging out with you, and you like, I don't want to bring this up now because if I bring this up, this is gonna mess up the rest of our evening, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought about when you, when I was reading in your blog as well, because the content was great. You said saving yourself and making you a priority over family and relationships. I think this is important because this is a taboo conversation, especially for moms. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. So, so how do you find time to prioritize you and, and like when did you get that revelation this last three years mm. like I feel like um my kids are 22 18 and then my little one just turned six today so oh. happy birthday uh, yeah thank you uh <laughs> so I feel like I've always like kept them busy and had them doing things but I don't feel like I was working on healing myself and working on being better for myself and for them and them being able to see our divorce and our relationship, especially the two older ones, actually watching all the struggles that we went to, which that's a whole nother topic of staying in relationships when they've expired and your kids are watching it. Um, we could talk <laughs> I could about that. <laughs> but um, I feel like to, like I said before, like to be good for other people and to be good for your kids, you have to make time for yourself. Like a lot of times you just keep going. You're like, oh, she's got this practice. He's got that practice. They got this program and I got to do this. And I'm like, I was literally on 50 different uh, committees in the community. I was helping out with stuff at my church. Like I was busy every single day but I wasn't taking time for myself. And I, I mean, I've struggled with anxiety and depression for years and I haven't had medication for, I would say probably five years. I haven't taken my medication for that because I've started learning how to prioritize myself and not feeling guilty for it. Like you, you literally have to make time for yourself. Like you can't just keep saying you don't have time. Like, I'm not sure if you've seen that I've been posting that I've been working out. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Over the last year, I was like, okay, I'm starting to gain some weight, but I used to work out and I was in a car accident, so I hadn't been. And I was like, I have to start working out maybe two to three times a week. And I kept giving myself excuses why I couldn't do it Tuesday, but I'll do it on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then finally this year, I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna commit to doing something physical every single day for at least 30 minutes for a hundred days. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, okay, let's see. And now I'm on like 100 and today's day 140 because I got to 100. Like, let me tack on another 100 and see if I can do this. But I was like, I kept thinking I didn't have the time, but I do have the time. Well, like when you prioritize things and you're like, this is important to me. So I'm going to make time for this. And I mean, last like two weeks ago, it was like 11 o'clock and I'm like, I haven't got my workout in. So I pulled the bike into my room. I was watching TV and I at 11.30, I biked until midnight. And I was like, I got my workout in for today. Like, mm. I prioritize that. Like, I make time for myself. Mm, I love that. That's that's good. I, I was listening to, or yeah, I love Audible. I was listening to books and uh, while I was at work. And it's this guy named Ed Milet. And he has a new book out called The Power of One More. And he was basically talking about what you just did as far as taking that extra step to say, I'm going to stick to what I committed myself to no matter what, come hell or high water, I'm going to follow through. And he was saying how that gives you that confidence because you, you broke through that barrier to say, regardless of what comes, yep. it will, it will get done. Yep. You know, thank you. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's that it's that confidence. And, and I always tell people, too, it's important that whatever you tell yourself in your head, you have to be careful how you treat yourself yep. uh, because we can be our own worst critic. And I was thinking how, it would be rude for some of the things that we say to ourselves if somebody said it to ourselves, if somebody said it to us. Yes. But we allow ourselves to beat ourselves up. Right. Right. You know, our voice is the loudest one we hear. And we have to, I mean, I say that all the time, like you are in your head all day. And if you keep saying, oh, I can't do this, I can't eat healthy and I don't like this and I'm not good with money. Like then you start making yourself believe that you're not good with money, but you haven't even taken the steps to try to look at your budget, look at your finances. Like you haven't taken the time to do that, but you keep convincing yourself. So you're just like, okay, I'm never going to be good with money. So I'm just going to keep spinning it and see what happens you know so it's just like you have to be intentional about how you talk to yourself mm-hmm. i totally agree this has been uh very informative very transparent thanks again for taking some time to be a guest on today's show uh Tarita, let everyone know how they can get in touch with through in touch with you through social media um so i like you said i have a bra line well it started out as a bra line, but I have the um, Shy Intimate Apparel um, online. So I have the bra line and loungewear. And then I have the blog, which is called Just Living in Shit, which was birthed through this divorce and me finding myself. And so um, I sell like branded stuff on that. So they're both on the Shy Intimate Apparel website. It's either modesty for the Shy collection or motivation for the Just Living in Shit. Um, and my Instagram is Shy Intimate. Uh, my my Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everything is shy, intimate, or just living in shit. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, I want to acknowledge you for being transparent about your personal life because uh, that can be very challenging in today's social media world because people can be harsh. People can be misunderstanding. Yeah. So I want to acknowledge you for that. I want to acknowledge you for um, just going through adverse times and still making it um, and, and still looking like what you haven't been through, you know, right. so, <laughs> so I want to acknowledge you for that. And then being a mom, and I know there's so much more that probably goes on in your life, but I just wanted to give you your flowers and acknowledge you for those things. So, uh, thanks again. Thank for you. Thank you. A guest on today's show, Brave Hearts community, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this video with someone. Cause you never know who might need this.